Patrick Russell, EA, coming to you from MMTaxman.com studios. In today's episode, we round third base and slide our way home on the discussion of what happens if you receive an IRS audit letter. To refresh our memories, we learned that a typical timeline for an IRS audit will begin by receiving an IRS audit letter in the mail. This will lead to making contact with the auditor, scheduling out things like the appointments for the interview and setting up a deadline for the submission of the tax documents. Upon the review of those tax documents, the IRS auditor will mail out an audit results report, which will explain proposed changes to the taxpayer's tax bill. The taxpayer then has the ability to appeal each proposed change by providing additional information to persuade the auditor of seeing things your way. In today's episode, we take a quick peek behind the curtain of the IRS bureaucracy. We will play the proverbial fly on the wall and witness a heated exchange between an IRS field auditor and his manager. We'll explore the power structure that exists between an overworked IRS field agent and an equally cost-sensitive superior when an audit case gets shoved up the chain of command. But before we do that, we need to pay some bills. And to do that, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you wish you could have done more for President Trump during this heated election season? Are you tired of watching the left-wing mob go unchecked and wish you could teach those anarchists a lesson? Well, wish no more. Introducing the Trump Edition Duck Hunt. Now you can become President Trump's avenging angel. First, you will be trained with military style assault weapons, each level sharpening your skill as a black cladded no ID civil unrest agent. But the fun doesn't end there. Once you pass the training levels, a variety of live missions await, including quelling violent civil unrests, taking out the fake news once and for all. Finally, graduating to the ultimate mission of eliminating all of POTUS's enemies with extreme prejudice. Your real life may continue to suck, but in the Trump edition duck hunt, you can be the reason why President Trump wins and the hero that makes America great again. You win. My God, man, this son of a bitch has been burning through cash like a Kardashian throwing a birthday party. I haven't seen complete disregard for any business sense like this since... That's right, boss, we haven't seen financial incompetence on this level since reviewing the president's tax returns. Levy, why am I still hearing about this f***ing case? Didn't you tell me it was going to go to appeals weeks ago? It did, boss, and the Court of Appeals after that. McAdoo isn't giving up. It's his f***ing rep. That Russell, that EA, he keeps appealing. I've been chasing this case up the chain all this time. All that's left now is tax court. What? No. Tell me again, how has this maggot been paying his bills? Because it certainly hasn't been from what he's making from this shit party promoting business. His dad died several years ago, left him a tax-free inheritance through a trust. Oh, shit. Yeah, boss, McAdoo receives an allowance from this irrevocable trust. The trust income is completely out of McAdoo's control. Trust is legit, boss, even has its own EIN and trustee. It's the reason why we didn't ping in at first when reviewing McAdoo's yearly income transcripts. Levy, why are you still chasing this guy? This piece of shit case has loser written all over it. You should have shut down this case weeks ago. It's that damn rep, Russell, the EA. He's such an asshole, boss. First he throws a pile of evidence at you, and then he makes you feel like a dumb just because you ask a few clarification questions to help connect the dots. 
A real piece of work, that one. I'd like to slap the shit eating grin off that stupid face of his. Jesus H. Christ, Levy. We don't have the manpower or the resources to chase down every hole we come across. How many times I gotta tell you, Levy? Dollars and cents. Dollars and cents. If it don't get more of the first and don't have any of the second, close the mother case. Damn, Levy. You triggered my ulcers, man. Let me get this straight. The trust makes all the income, reports all the income on its trust tax return, and then pays all of the taxes. And this bum, McAdoo, receives an allowance, and that's what he uses to live. Am I right? That's what the f***ing records say, boss. Theoretically, McAdoo could have easily paid all of his living expenses from the allowance he received from the irrevocable trust. He didn't need any other source of income. Even if we could strong arm that piece of Russell, the EA, into accepting a determination limiting their deductions on that business to 75% of what they totally claimed. The income and the taxes due would be negligible. I've heard enough, Levy. Close this case. We're not going to tax court over this bullshit. The new tax season's right around the corner. We need to get the mainframe reprogrammed and reset for the new tax season. You did good, Levy. You took the L on this one, but keep that chin up. I've got a case that came down the pipeline that's gonna make your mother day. Boss, you're not saying what I think you're saying. That's right, Levy, your dream assignment. The case that you've been wanting all this time. Oh, sh Kaylee mother machinating? Oh man, karma is alive and well, boss. That's right, Levy. It's a new mother day. It's time to clean house. Get to work. I'm on it, boss. By the time I'm done with her, her tax wrap sheet will be as clean as her ethical compass is broken. As in totally. Susan! How many times I gotta tell you, it doesn't matter if the voting fraud petition is as hollow as a TV evangelist's marriage vows. We get paid either way, Susan. Susan, how many times have I told you, don't use the E word with me. <sighs> Susan, this is quid pro quo 101. Everybody's got their snout in the trough. As long as you don't splash the mud, everybody gets fatter, Susan. Yes, I like bacon too, Susan. All right, bad analogy. I can see my wisdom is gonna be lost on you, Susan. All right, I see me coming right now. Wait, hey, this shouldn't take too long. I'm gonna call you right back. I wanna go over my list of unlawful detainers. The courts are starting to loosen up and those moratoriums, they're starting to elapse, woo! It's time for these deadbeats to get woke, Susan. Oh, yes, I am aware that there's still a global pandemic raging. Ah, oh, Susan, that E word again. Ethical. <laughs> Susan, I got a question for you. How ethical would it be for me to hold back on your holiday bonus? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, I gotta go. Man, oh. Francis, you're going into court today, not a Beastie Boys throwback party. Yo, Ernie, dial down the bass in your voice, my man. I just got finished with a monster set with G-Eazy. And brah, let me tell you, it is hard touching anything around that fool that doesn't have a thin white layer of dust on it. You heard? My brain feels trapped in my body like J-Lo in that shitty movie, The Cell. Yo, Ernie, how long is it gonna take, my man? Well, that depends, Mint. Once we go through those doors, we belong to the judge. It's up to her or him. Pat got you to the goal line, but now it's time for me to cross over it and finish this game because that's what I do, Mint. I finish! I finish all over my opponents! Now, I love you, Mint, but I don't work for free. I think Susan explained to you my retainer fee. Yeah, bro, I got you right here. Mint, I thought we got rid of the rubber band banks, my man. I didn't bring my cash counting machine. Relax, I got your chick right here, Ernie. These ones, just from my niece's quinceanera. You heard? You don't gotta worry. 
Pat's got me squared away. I got that QuickBooks now. We're talking mobile deposits, person-to-person -person payment solutions. I got that Venmo. I got that PayPal. I got all my bills on auto pay. I even send Pat my financials every three months. Got that reminder on that Google Calendar and everything. We straight? Oh yeah, as if I took two pills. All right, man, listen up. It's important. Once we go through those doors, oh, are you about to drop some of that expensive lawyer shit now? Goddamn right I am. Let me explain things in terms that you'll understand. When we walk through those doors, we leave the real world behind. Love, hate, right, wrong, justice. These words have no place in between the walls of a courtroom. This is going to be a war of attrition. We're going to take our time. We're going to make sure that we use every legal recourse in the book. I have ways, my friend, of making this a painstakingly slow slog through your due process. We're going to make sure that you are afforded every single benefit afforded to you from the United States Code, AKA the law, baby. Now, Mint, I ask you, my man, do you have any questions? Yo, not a one. I read you loud and clear, Ernie. You know, when I was on the inside in county, doing my stretch, we used to have a word for what you just described. We used to call that a beefy. We're about to give Uncle Sam a beefy. <laughs> That's right. Let's get in there and give Uncle Sam a beefy together. Ah, uh, hold on a second, fellas. As plainly homoerotic as that imagery is, that won't be necessary. Mr. Francis McAdoo, on behalf of the Treasury Secretary mm, and the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service mm, and the management group of the Small Business Division of your local IRS field office, uh, I hereby proclaim your audit case closed. With no changes and no additional taxes due, I'll be forwarding some documents I'll need signed to your representative later this afternoon. I just had to race down here myself so that I can end this travesty and stop the wasteful dollars of taxpayer money on this fruitless pursuit of compliance on what is obviously a de minimis case. I'm done with you for now, McAdoo. But let me tell you something about the United States Tax Code. It is not all about collecting the Benjamins for Uncle Sam. Sure, that's a big part of it. But that's not the only part of it, McAdoo. Every United States American taxpayer should be afforded a enforcement standard that not only corrects, but also educates and reforms as well. Part of the IRS's mission statement is to treat all taxpayers fairly, McAdoo, including you. I can see that this audit has had an impression on you. I can see a change in your behavior. I have a feeling that your tax compliance is going to be a lot better from now on. Hmm. Don't get me wrong, McAdoo. I still think you are a lousy businessman. But I don't foresee any future trouble from you. Yo, first off, Officer Levy, respect, yo. And you're absolutely right. This entire experience has been an enlightenment for me. My eyes have been opened. My soul has been shown the sunlight. My integrity has been brought out of the mud and renewed. I'm a new man, Officer Levy, and it's all thanks to you. You don't have to worry about me anymore. You have yourself a wonderful day, Officer Levy. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, Ernie. This is great news, man. You and me are going to turn this mother out, baby. Yo, bro, real quick, I forgot to sign that check. Let me get yeah? that back. Yeah, of course. Quick. Wait, no, 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 wait. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. This makes up for last summer. Governor Ducey's pool party, remember? Yeah, you remember, Ernie. I had to stay behind and clean that shit up. Damn, who doesn't know that you don't drink eggnog when you're lactose intolerant? Damn, Ernie. Man, baby, I told you, I was already two eight balls to the wind by the time somebody gave me that eggnog car crash. I didn't even know what I was doing at that point, amigo. Hey, talk about turning a jacuzzi into a mud bath in no time flat, though. Eh? Hey, Susan. 
Yeah, girl. I need to talk to you about your holiday bonus one more time. Welcome back. All right, so we took a little creative licensing, dramatizing how the IRS team debates the merits of an audit case behind closed doors. In truth, the vast majority of the audit cases that I represent will close or settle out much sooner than reaching an IRS appeal board or having to walk through any doors of a courtroom. Most of my audit clients will get tired of hearing my sweet voice and are willing to accept minor adjustments on the audited tax return in order to facilitate closure of the case and let everybody move on with the rest of their lives. Pat, if you turn in all the records requested by the IRS auditor, how is it that you could have a bill at the very end? Ah. Usually the culprit is a line item like auto travel meals or any other item where the distinction between the business use versus personal use comes into question. Maybe something like a home office deduction claimed? For these special tax items, there must be an inarguable amount of circumstantial evidence to go along with the proof of purchase. What do I mean? For those individuals who love to play the tax game aggressively, it is imperative that these taxpayers go the extra mile by maintaining daily contemporaneous records. A mileage log, a business journal, both of these will be worth their weight in gold if you find yourself in a sticky predicament with the IRS. These records are critical if you are claiming levels of deductions that are over national averages or tables for that specific business activity. I tell my clients all the time, evidence needs to have PP. It needs to be pervasive and persuasive. This is the area of the audit where it evolves usually into a situation of playing a game of attrition. I can only submit evidence that the client actually has or records that are legally reconstructable. If those records do not reach a level of substantiation that the IRS auditor is willing to believe entirely, the auditor will, for expediency of closing the case, will negotiate. Hmm, I won't give you 100% of your dry cleaning receipts, but I'll give you 75%. Is the taxpayer forced to accept this kind of swap meet level determination? No, but your only recourse at that point would be to stand your ground and demand that this fight go to the next level. In the case of our good friend Francis McAdoo, the amount of the circumstantial evidence was both persuasive and pervasive that the weight balance of the cost-benefit scale swung decisively towards Mr. McAdoo's defense. His unique circumstances forced the IRS to decide if they were going to continue spending very limited resources on a wild goose chase. Does it always happen this way? Of course not. Why? Because at this late stage of the audit, the amount of additional taxes charged is far less than what was originally proposed at the beginning. All the major items have been checked off and cleared off the list. What's left are the marginal items that are a bit harder to prove, and because the time value for the client now becomes a factor, against my advice, clients will usually settle for something slightly bigger than zero. In those audit cases where I'm relying heavily on circumstantial evidence and a smile, I've prepared the client to expect for some give and take at the end of the exam. Why? Because the auditor doesn't want to waste time chasing after a couple of bucks and will do their very best to resolve those small issues quickly. And from the client's side, you best believe the taxpayer doesn't want to invest any more time than they have to being under the microscope of the IRS. Normally, clients are willing to pay a little something in order to make the dark clouds go away. Here at MMTaxMan.com, we specialize in audit letters and handling audit situations and we'll be more than happy to represent you through this harrowing experience. Let our expertise here at MMTaxMan.com guide you back to brighter days. Today in history, 2020 is mercifully tapping out. It remains to be seen whether 2021 will be the reprieve we all wish for or just the next round in the global game of musical chairs we all seem to be playing. Without question, the number one story of today is the transition of power in the United States from the six times over loser Mr. Lame Duck President himself, Donald J. Trump, moving out of the White House and making way 
for the president-elect Joe Biden and vice president-elect Kamala Harris. Life will be unimaginably different in 2021, but at least we can all sleep more soundly at night knowing that this country finally has a proverbial adult at the wheel as we continue to navigate through a global pandemic world. How different will a Biden administration look and feel to the rest of us after the long four years of presidential larceny we just suffered through? Well, let's see. Even today, at this moment, the grifting king continues to ply his trade of spouting charlatan wishes and concocting boogeyman dreams. Why? Because suckers keep paying him to do it. Today, Yours truly has collected in donations since losing the election approximately $207 million. The ludicrousy continues. A closer reading of the fine print to the donation agreement also uncovers a slimy and underhanded scheme that legally allows Mr. Lame Duck President to siphon off a majority of those donations for his own personal expenditures, including paying off the massive amount of debt he built up while running his losing re-election campaign. A sucker is born every minute. It's the only rationale that I can give you regarding why anyone would still be throwing their hard-earned money away by supporting this non-existent hope of overturning the results of last November's election. By most news publications, the count is easy. It's 86 judges that have been in a position to review the merits of Trump's fraudulent election claims and each and every one of them have all rejected those claims outright as either frivolous, incredulous, or quite simply, a complete waste of everyone's time. And the worst part about it all? Mr. Lame Dunk President knows. But hey, if dummies are out there foolish enough to believe his fabrication and lies, for a pretty penny, he's more than willing to oblige you. On this show, we believe in karma. We believe in the balance to all things in the universe. Mr. Lame Duck President Donald J. Trump has a lot to answer for. And I believe that a certain district attorney in New York State might just be at this very moment sharpening the tip of that karma spear, relishing in her role of bringing a little order and justice back into our lives. Sleep well if you can, Mr. Lame Duck. Finally, now that we have something that actually resembles a nationally coordinated effort against the coronavirus, I, for one, am eagerly awaiting my turn to get the COVID-19 vaccine. I, too, want to join the ranks of my fellow Americans, including both of my young daughters, who have crossed that COVID-19 bridge and are now looking back on the rest of us and saying, come on, people, let's go. It's time to live again. I understand and share that sentiment and look forward to my turn of receiving that life-saving shot all to the thanks of the wonders of modern medicine and science. And for those anti-vaxxers who have already made up their minds that they're not gonna get that shot, they're not gonna trust our doctors or scientists or even the ingenuity of the human spirit, I ask you to look into your hearts and challenge your own logic. If you are sick and tired of someone telling you to put on a mask, and if you are mad as hell when someone reminds you to take a step back and stand on a sticker on the floor, then for Pete's sakes, man, do your part. Get your damn shot. This is Today in History. In this week's Song of the Week, I want to take us back. I want to talk to us about phases. Every music aficionado goes through their phases. Everybody's gone through a Beatles phase, a Michael Jackson phase, a Prince phase, and a 90s gangster rap phase. Am I right? Well, for those of you that have gone through your Nirvana, Foo Fighter, and Angels and Airwaves phase, I've got a new band for you. It's a two-man band called Nefex. You've got a guy named Cameron and the lead singer Bryce Savage, I'm sure that's his given name, who come together and blend the music of hard rock, rap, and electronica all in one beautiful menudo blend that provides us with hard-hitting lyrics that really have one theme and one theme only. Shoot for the top, win at the game, or die trying. It's about extremes, people. And with this album, Netflix and New Beginnings, you have 16 songs that'll help you get through the fray. You'll be glad you listened.
In this week's Click That Exit Button Movie of the Week, I choose with a heavy heart, Midnight Sky. The big tentpole movie that was directed and starred in by George Clooney. Now, ever since the advertisement came out several months ago, it looked juicy and for a geek like me, it did definitely get my tongue salivating for hopefully a good sci-fi flick. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you, I was greatly disappointed. I didn't click the exit button within the first 10 minutes. In fact, I made it through the entire movie but there was just way too many gaps in the logic, gaps in the story, too many unanswered questions of why this lonely scientist would be all by himself with absolutely no way to communicate with humanity's last hopes that are out there in the cosmos looking for new homes. I don't buy it at all. And spoiler alert, the girl in the movie is all part of her imagination. He imagined the whole thing. It was a sixth sense type of deal. I did it, I screwed you up, there it is. I ruined the movie for you, good. Maybe that'll prevent you from not watching it because it wasn't worth your time anyway. You're welcome. Now, it's that part of the show where we bring to you the weather, but not just any old forecast. Our weather lady searches to uncover a deeper, more meaningful weather prediction. One that affects all of us. She's not concerned about weekend plans or game time conditions. Her true aim is to change the hearts and minds of those Americans still unwilling to accept the inconvenient truth of the one weather story we all need to pay attention to. Climate change. Coming to us from the woodlands of Michigan via the mmtaxman.com video conferencing network, I welcome back to the show, Miss Midnight Rains. Tell us, Midnight, what's it looking like in your neck of the woods? Hola, Patricio. This is Midnight Rains coming to you from Porterville, Michigan. I'm here in the Timberland of Michigan to speak to local residents about their concerns or lack of concerns about the changes in the weather that are indisputable. A global warming is not a blue state problem, it's not a red state problem, it's a United States of America problem. My job is to reach deep into the heart of America and to do what I can to wake up the deniers. Hello, Mr. McCauley. Can you please tell me one more time, what's the name of this place? Uh, yes, ma'am. This here is a tactical, obstacle, kill environment, otherwise known as toke. Oh, it appears to me that a lot of trees will cut down so you can talk. Please introduce yourself and tell all your fellow Americans why are you helping the cut down of trees and contributing to the forestation of this place. Uh, yes ma'am. My name is, uh, Scooter McCoy. Uh, wait, Scooter McCoy? Do your mom not like you? Uh, no ma'am. That's on account of my daddy. You see, he left before I was born and mama likes to tell people that he scooted away once she told him that she was pregnant. Fascinating, please keep going. Yes ma'am, you see, this tactical environment is critical for us protecting our Second Amendment rights. You know, the one to bear arms. The way I see it is, what's the point of having guns if you can't use them? I mean, a man can't live off of killing defenseless animals alone. I mean, sure, you can go to a safari and bag one of those endangered species types, but do you know how expensive those two week safaris are? Ma'am. I'm a mechanic in town working on cars 2010 and older. I don't make that kind of scratch. Ah, but here, with my brethren, in the sanctity of this cut down forest, ah, ma'am, freedom still reigns. Gladys, what I tell you about them claymores? The side that says this side faces the enemy? That ain't you, Cletus. Damn, Cletus, sometimes you don't make no sense. Mr. McCoy, please understand that nobody's denying you or your dear friends the right to own guns. But please, can you explain to your fellow Americans why are you contributing to the cut down of trees when you obviously know that this is helping clear the air that you and your grandkids will breathe? Yes, ma'am. Look around you. All I see is more trees. Surely there's enough trees in this whole wide world that a few thousand acres cut down for some coordinated war games and state governor abduction training won't be lost in the shuffle. I mean, ma'am. I've got a militia to train. Mother Nature, 
They're just gonna have to make do. Cletus! What I tell you about them grenades? You can't put the pin back in! Ah! Oh my, what Mr. Scooter and my colleague just discovered is that our actions against nature have consequences. And just because we don't see those consequences right in front of our eyes, it doesn't mean that we're reaching to a tipping point where a critical line we cross, where the consequences will be as clear as a tree falling on top of your head. This is Midnight Rains coming to you from Potterville, Michigan, with the mic in my hand and the thirst for la verdad. Welcome back. It's that part of the show where we blend our love of sports with our morbid fascination of betting our financial freedom away. I'm talking about Homer Sports Corner, a place where diehard loyalty to the home team drums out any objectivity or common sense. Returning back to the show via the MMTaxman.com studios video conferencing network, I'm talking about the one, the only Dizzy, the Cooler Bronson. Dizzy, I gotta tell you, the bet on most games right now is whether they'll actually play the game or not. Am I right? No time for layman questions now, Pat. I'm on a burner and can't stop now. Blow on these for me, sweetheart. Ooh, wet. I like your style. Boom, baby! Archic! Six, 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 winner! All right, Pat, you're absolutely right. The Rona is making it absolutely difficult to be a sports grinder on the day-to-day -day basis. I've had to supplement my main source of income, as you can see. Mmm, blow on these for me, sweetheart. It's your turn. What kind of luck are you going to give old Dizzy? Oh, take your time. It's your world, girl. Mmm. Boom, baby. Big Red 7, winner. Pat, like I told you, a man's got to eat. My successful sports betting, it relies on a finely tuned algorithm that requires precise input and reliable data. Shit. Between the individual players being quarantined and the entire games either being suspended or canceled, what? That is way too many changing factors for me to bet the house. And I do mean house, Pat. I've got mortgages to pay, including on the extended family, if you know what I mean. Any one of those changing factors can endanger my wager. And nothing, including a drive through worker who forgets to put the straw in the bag, boils my blood more than a wager lost. All right, ladies. This time, you both get to blow. Boom, baby! Uh, Jimmy Field 6, winner! Pat, for the foreseeable future, your favorite gambler, the cooler, is going on the road, looking for any games of chance that are willing to let a player like me through the door. All right, fortunately, there's still places in this United States that believe in a man earning his living. You might recently have heard that these places are called Red States. On the calendar, I've got a poker tournament right around the corner. My contacts are telling me that this tourney is going to be crawling with big time celebrities, with big time money rolls, and small time game. It's a perfect situation for a hustler like me. All right, Pat, a promise is a promise. You want to pick? I got to pick for your ass. How about the Los Angeles Lakers repeating as the NBA champions next year? Back to back, baby. You can put the house on yours and mine and everybody's favorite team, Los Los Angeles Lakers, to repeat as the 2021 NBA champions. You want apples? How about these apples? You have the king, you have the brow, recently signing multi-year extensions, laying the cement for the foundation of the new NBA dynasty. Boom, baby! Pick up the money, seven! Winner, winner, winner! Thank you, Dizzy. And you best believe I'll be taking your advice and betting the house, or should I say my kids' college fund, on my beloved Lakers repeating as the NBA champions back to back. We've reached the end of this show. From each and every one of us at MMTaxman.com, I'd like to genuinely thank everyone that took the time this year to watch us make fool of ourselves. We certainly hope that you learned a lot and had some fun along the way. If any year needed some levity, it was this year in 2020. Right around the corner is a brand new tax season. I know, I know. Pat, it seems like just yesterday we were working on the 2019 taxes. What can I say? Time flies when you're sheltering in place. 
This tax season, like the last one, will probably see an extended due date. There has been no formal official announcement from the IRS as to when the e-file season will begin, and likewise no official announcement of whether the traditional April 15th deadline will be pushed back. Here at MMTaxMan.com, we've spent the entire year preparing for this moment. We are 100% online. We do not have a retail office to come to. We will have two drop-off locations, both in Long Beach and here at our new corporate headquarters in Arizona. Our Regis office in Mesa does have a snazzy conference room, but that is not our intent. We are not attempting to recreate the storefront experience. What we are doing is faster, smarter, easier, and safer. All you need to do to get the same level of quality service of tax preparation you've always expected from us is email, text, or call us. We've been promoting help at mmtaxman.com all year, but the returning clients, you already know how to get a hold of me, the email to use to reach out to send us your tax documents, and we will get her done as always. During the tax season, it is my sincere intention to keep the videos and materials flowing. Good luck to me on that. My team is already working on the next project and we look forward to seeing you again next year in 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a sappy, safe, and prosperous new year.